Thanks so much, John. Can everybody hear me okay? Um, like yeah, John said, I'm an, in, great, great. I'm an internist in Seattle at University of Washington. I practice at Harborview, which is a, the county hospital here. Um, and I had the pleasure of kind of helping write um, this, this article um, in the American Journal of Medicine a few years ago and can't take complete credit. I had a big group of folks that basically came together with some suggestions. Um, they're, they're not um, all data driven necessarily, uh, mostly just expert opinion. Um, and I think that the, the other caveat I wanted to share was just that I don't necessarily personally utilize all these suggestions. I think you have to see what works best for you and in your own practice. Uh, but I wanted to highlight the, the seven things that we talk about um, in that article with a few examples. The first is, um, if you could advance the slide, thanks. The first is to be clear and succinct in your documentation. Um, some, some potential ways of doing that are moving the assessment and plan to the, to the beginning of your note, um, just because that's really the meat of the, of the note for your patient and having it first kind of emphasizes it. Uh, especially with EHRs nowadays, there's so much of this um, note float and this, uh, you know, imported data that really isn't particularly helpful and it's usually available elsewhere in the chart, both for clinicians and for patients to review. Um, so uh, avoiding duplicating it can help make the note more uh, easy to read. And then I think this is challenging, but avoiding some of the jargon that um, we're frankly trained to, to include. Um, there are some electronic tools, I know the EHR that I use, you can um, type abbreviations that the, the EHR automatically kind of converts into written out terms. So the second tip would be directly and respectfully addressing concerns. And there are other speakers today uh, that address some of these exact issues. Um, I have to credit for this first bullet, uh, Sigal Bell, who's one of the other, uh, one of the folks who's really um, spearheaded the open notes movement. Um, she kind of uh, came up with this catchphrase of discuss what you write and write what you discuss. Whatever occurs in the visit should really be what's written and, and ideally there would be nothing more, nothing less than that. Um, I think some of the challenging areas that we run into are around the, the sensitive subjects in our society, obesity or substance use or mental health or intimate part, part, partner violence. And whenever discussing any of these, um, I think it's important for us to remember that HIPAA generally guarantees patients access to the information. It's, it's not that um, by not including it um, in an open note, you know, that, that, that patient is still able to access the information. It's just that open notes facilitates that access, makes it a little easier than going to the release of information office to obtain the note. Even before open notes are implemented, patients can see all the same information in their charts. So, you know, thinking about the language, language is so important to a lot of the communication that um, we have with our patients, and that's true both of the verbal communication in the room, but I think the same is true for written communication in, in chart. And I, and I think that there are fairly simple things we can do. We have to un, kind of untrain and retrain ourselves to do it, but um, thinking about um, instead of saying the patient refuses X, Y, or Z treatment, um, saying that they, they opt out of a treatment, um, you know, reporting that the patient, um, you know, instead of saying they deny alcohol use, you could say the patient does not consume alcohol. Some of these things um, don't take a lot longer to type, but we just have to get used to that slightly different um, way of expressing ourselves in the, in the note. Um, some of the abbreviations like SOB or uh, SU for follow-up I think can, are obviously could be potentially confusing or problematic for patients, and so taking that extra minute to type that out uh, could avoid some issues down the road. So the next tip would be to include patients in the note writing process. This is one that I find pretty challenging because I don't always uh, do my documentation in the room, but I do generally um, try to angle the computer so that both the patient and I can see the data and the information there. Um, when, when dictation is available, if it's available at your institution, you can consider dictating with the patient present. Um, more and more institutions are sometimes using scribes, although that's not available to me. Um, but I think that's another opportunity to kind of engage the patient in the documentation process. 
And then there's increasing interest in this idea of inviting the patient to contribute to the note. There's um, kind of an initiative called Our Notes, which um, uh, we use a little bit that the patient can kind of start some of the interval history of HPI um, prior to the visit um, via the portal. And then you can import that into your note and kind of incorporate it into the HPI. I think this is really important um, in order to to help patients and, um, and pa help patients get more out of open notes, um, but also to help yourself get feedback about the notes, um, just reminding patients and encouraging them to read their notes. Um, just a quick mention before the end of the visit that I'd like you to look at my note, make sure that we're both on the same page. Um, there are also kind of more sy systematic things that it's maybe hard for an individual clinician to do, but um, some EHR systems will have um, reminders either on an after-visit summary um, or um, automated EHR reminders to patients, oh, your note is now available to read, um, and, and kind of prompting them to log in and look at that. And I think those can be quite helpful um, to really um, help patients get the most out of the notes and then also allow you to get feedback, like I mentioned. The second to the last tip is that just that, to ask for and use the feedback from your patient. So I think phrases like, um, did you have a chance to read my note from the last visit? Uh, did it prompt any questions or concerns? Um, or, you know, we're working together as a treatment team. Uh, let me know if you think there could be a mistake in your note. We want to, I want to work with you to fix it. Um, it, it kind of aligns you with the patient because um, ultimately that is the goal to help them improve their own, uh, their own health care. And finally, the last slide is just being familiar with how to, or the last tip, excuse me, is being familiar with how to amend notes. I think we all recognize that uh, we're human and errors occur. There are also times that there are disagreements that aren't necessarily an error, um, and I think those are different situations and should probably be addressed differently. Um, in the first example here, there's just a, a, a frank mistake, um, you know, the wrong side. Um, of the body was mentioned in the note, um, and you could presumably uh, correct that um, in the chart or correct it for the next visit if you don't want to do it retrospectively. There are other situations where, you know, you, you shouldn't necessarily change your medical assessment, um, like this example with alcohol. I'm sorry you disagree with my assessment that alcohol contributed to your fall. While I can't change my medical opinion, if you'd like, I can add that you disagree with it. And taken to the extreme, there are situations where um, the patient actually might want to request to have his or her own, um, you know, uh, opinion or perspective uh, included formally in their in their chart. And most medical record um, systems, uh, most health systems, allow that to happen with some um, with some kind of a, uh, administrative process. So th those are my seven tips, um, and I. You know, I think I'm really interested in the, the um, learning collaborative or learning network because these are things that we kind of came up with as a group. I don't think that they're the be-all, end-all, um, and I'm sure that um, a collective group could really um, help hone um, and potentially even uh, come up with additional notes uh, or additional note-writing tips that could be really helpful for clinicians.